Welcome back to Taiwan Outlook. Join us today is Minister Zhang, our Overseas Compatriot Affairs Com Commission. Mr. Zhang, you have been in this job for seven years, but I know that uh, you don't plan to go into politics. What's your personal thoughts about these seven years? When I look back, it's, it's a long way, but uh, somehow the days pass so fast. It's hard to believe it's already been seven years and the longest you know, survived <laughs> minister. Kevin remember. <laughs> right. Um, but I must say I enjoy the job mm -hmm. and I have spent all my time and energy mm -hmm. in this position mm -hmm. and I'm most very devoted and I have seen the progress and that's the joy that I have enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I know you've been uh, visiting uh, more than a hundred uh, countries and regions and mm -hmm. cities and so on mm -hmm. and that must have been a very exhausting job for you. Yeah, I've been constantly on, on the go, mm -hmm. and uh, oftentimes, you know, the, the, to save the money for the government, I try to go to as many countries as possible in yeah. one trip. Yeah. No, How I, many managers have you already accumulated? <laughs> uh, close to 1.3 million miles. Really? Yeah, it's about, they said about. Uh, 24,000 miles would make you go right. around the world once. Mm -hmm. So it's at least 50 times around the world. Uh -huh. you know. What's the most interesting part of the job? You know? Meeting people mm -hmm. and getting to know, know them and try to help them uh, how to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, very rewarding. And you see there's so many people with different kind of backgrounds and that's mm -hmm. a challenge. Mm -hmm. to myself yeah. and also since I've been with this um, uh, ministry for so long I get to know all my uh, staff members uh -huh. so well and they are like my, part of my big family mm -hmm. and I... Your staff members are all over the world right? Not just in uh, Taipei. Well that's true they are 52 abroad mm -hmm. stationed in a uh, different part of the country and mm -hmm. some areas we are associated with the foreign ministry I mean, under the um, directorship of mm -hmm. our um, representatives there. Mm -hmm. But in some areas we have, we have now 16 culture centers worldwide mm -hmm. and they, uh, our staff members have to be uh, in charge yeah. by themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah. what's the most challenging or difficult part of your job? Again, it's a um, people-to-people relationship. Sometimes could be very hard because um, y you may not mean it, but um, somebody get hurt. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, you have to be very cautious, mm -hmm. and, and yet you have to show your warmth. Mm -hmm. you know? This job is not a diplomatic job, but you are yeah. doing diplomacy as well. And as we know that Beijing is also trying to block some of your entries to some countries. Could you tell us your experience of meeting these kind of pressures from yeah. Beijing? The one great uh, achievement that uh, I, I could uh, brag about even, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, when in 2003, we were able to get a special kind of arrangement mm -hmm. in uh, South Africa. People holding ROC passport mm -hmm. doesn't have to get any visa, okay? but people from China would have to pay a certain amount of money, mm -hmm. sort of a guarantee money, and it's very difficult to get a visa. And mm -hmm. how did we uh, achieve that? Yeah. It was because a year before, in, I guess um, in summer mm -hmm. of 2002, mm -hmm. I went there to um, South Africa, and knowing there's one uh, Minister of Interior, Home mm -hmm. Affairs, uh, Dr. Butalazzi, who uh, is very kind to the Taiwanese businessman. Mm -hmm. So we decided to send him a kind of a commendation, yeah. Yeah? and invited him to come to Taiwan. Of course, we, we don't have the budget to pay for it. The <laughs> <laughs> Ministry of Foreign Affairs did it. Mm -hmm. But then the, f the following year, he did uh, come to Taiwan, and uh, we treated him well and also arranged to have him meet uh, Vice President Annette Liu. Mm -hmm. And after he returned to uh, South Africa, he was so impressed. 
he decided, okay, I told him, I said, if you want Taiwanese businessmen to go to South Africa to invest, would you please make it easier for the easy access to your country? He said, of course, no problem. It's, uh, Taiwan is so uh, well developed and your people are law abiding. Why not? Mm -hmm. So he decided to give us this privilege. Mm -hmm. But then, of, of course, you can imagine PRC uh, people are really angry. They are, they are furious. Mm -hmm. How could they be discriminated against? You know, so they uh, challenged the uh, South African government mm -hmm. and their Ministry of Foreign Affairs, of course, stood very firm. Eventually, this case went through the uh, court judicial system. Mm -hmm. And the judges, they're all well trained in the British system, mm -hmm. saying, look, this is um, not, not uh, they, they tell the foreign ministry people, uh, uh, this is not, not your uh, business. Mm -hmm. We have to, for the uh, matter of uh, visa issuance, mm -hmm. that's strictly for home affairs. Yeah. So uh, for the following two years, we all enjoy that privilege. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I think that that's uh, one uh, great uh, achievement that will encourage us to go on. But uh, other than that, I think um, PRC uh, government officials noticed that I've been working uh, sort of underground uh, very, um, very carefully mm -hmm. and um, try to uproot some of their uh, system. Mm -hmm. And so they are quite angry with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, now they started to block me from going to this country or that country. That's right. yeah, that, that's getting a little bit more difficult. But in general, you're still OK in trying to get into some of the countries? Right? Yeah, I think I could travel more freely than the Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Foreign yeah. Affairs. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But on the other hand, we've been seeing uh, the government's new approach in downsizing mm. the government structure. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, OCAC could be merged into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Do you mm -hmm. think that's a, a right decision to do that or trying to downsize the uh, o OCAC? No, the downsizing, I think, I think it's a general trend. Oh, that's right. Okay? So um, I have nothing against it. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I uh, was just kind of demoralizing uh, to some of my staff members. Yeah. And I tell them, look, we don't have too much money in our budget. Uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs has, has a lot. Uh, we make sure that we are going to get a lot from them. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's only an uh, advantageous uh, mm -hmm. arrangement for us. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think um, right now we have 36 ministries. Mm -hmm. That's way too many. That's right. So I, I think that trend is, is correct. But yeah. some people argue that once the MC, uh, OCAC become part of the mm -hmm. Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh -huh. uh, the head of OCAC could become a vice minister or minister then it would be very difficult for him or her to travel to some of the countries. Do you think that's a, that's a concern? That's not exactly the case because uh, like going to Geneva, mm -hmm. I went three times for the WHO thing. Mm -hmm. Minister, uh, Deputy Minister that's of right. Foreign Affairs could still go. So mm -hmm. it depends on which country you are going. Yeah. No problem. That's right. Yeah. Let's talk about your personal career change. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you are not thinking about running uh, as a legislature, PR legislature, a, a of large the, member, a large member of mm -hmm. the uh, DVP uh, legislatures. Uh -huh. yeah. What made you think about changing a, a career? <laughs> it's partly, I think, um, our Congress needs to be reformed, mm -hmm. and uh, spending so many years in the central government, I know inside out, yeah. and I. And also, I studied law before, and I think we need to really do some uh, drastic uh, changes mm -hmm. in in our um, Congress, mm -hmm. and um, especially starting from next year, we are only to have uh, 113, 13. and the new uh, group are going to carry a very heavy uh, duty, mm -hmm. and so I just put my name. Uh, on the list, uh, mm. make it available, mm. and if people uh, believe that I'm a good government official and I could be a very trustworthy person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and with my uh, experience uh, dealing with uh, foreign affairs matters and also um, some domestic matters as well, I, I was a member of mm -hmm. the Control UN right. for more than a year and mm -hmm. also worked at um, Taipei government 
Taipei municipal government That's for right. four years mm -hmm. when President Chen was uh, mayor. mayor. So. Uh -huh. right. so I think um, I have something to contribute, I mm -hmm. think. And especially after this uh, new uh, system is going to be enforced, adopted, most of the people elected regionally mm -hmm. are going to be uh, concerned local with issues. local issues. That's right. So you need to have somebody who, um, uh, veterans like me, you know, although I'm um, older, but I think as long as I'm mm -hmm. healthy and mm -hmm. I'm willing uh, to serve the government. Mm -hmm. I, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the past few years, mm -hmm. the uh, relationship between the uh, Congress, legislature, yeah. and the executive branch has mm -hmm. been a deadlock. Right. What are the things, even until now, the budget is yet to be passed right. by the legislature. Mm -hmm. How do you explain the deadlock, and is there any way that we can break the deadlock? Uh, oh, that now? question, I don't think I can uh, <laughs> <laughs> reply. I think um, Mr. Frank Shea uh, mm -hmm. referred to that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he thinks he could, um, if he were elected president, he mm -hmm. would be able to solve the problem. Okay. But uh, it's difficult uh, mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. You know, both sides mm -hmm. have uh, confronted each other, mm -hmm. and it's um, somehow we have to sit down mm -hmm. and talk it over. We are not going to achieve anything. It's a lot of heat, but yeah. there's no result. Yeah. Yeah. Coming, back to, coming back to the issue of Taiwan's international status and mm -hmm. diplomatic space, mm -hmm. uh, you've been traveling all over the world. Mm -hmm. And with the rise of China, some people are very concerned about the uh, diminishing diplomatic space of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Do you share with that kind of concern and worries? Well, yes and no. I mean, like in the case of uh, Canada, I can tell ever since the Conservative Party took over, it has been very friendly to mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And they even openly support us for the WHO bid. That's right. And my own experience with Canada, five years ago when I went, almost six years ago, I was not allowed to go to Ottawa. They mm -hmm. said that's a sensitive place. Can't to go. Go. No, but this time was last August when I went. They said okay, no problem, mm -hmm. right? And um, in Canada, actually, there are a lot of people who work very hard to promote Taiwanese culture, and especially in Vancouver, they have this uh, Taiwanese culture festival mm -hmm. for the past 17 years, and for six years consecutively, they won the uh, award for the best uh, culture activities mm -hmm. for the entire Canada. Mm -hmm. And so gradually we build up a closer ties. And so it takes hard work. Mm -hmm. And you have to be patient. You have to be uh, determined. Uh, perseverance, mm -hmm. it's important. How about other parts of the world, including Europe? Some people think that Europe is now jumping onto China's bandwagon and Taiwan is losing the support in Europe. Do you think mm, that's the case? No, not, not necessarily, mm -hmm. because um, people in Europe are quite concerned about human rights. Mm -hmm. And PRC uh, perform quite poorly, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of problems. Of course, right now, they are all counting on the 2008 Olympics. But uh, we still think, in the long run, long run Taiwan is going to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you just talked talk about the summer Olympic in the year 2008, they mm -hmm. think there will be a rising nationalism uh, in China, but also all mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. How will Taiwan be doing in you know, meeting this kind of rising uh, Chinese nationalism? Well, we have to keep on stressing on the values, common values mm -hmm. held in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And we uh, put emphasis in uh, convincing the Taiwanese that Taiwanese uh, culture has its superiority. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of uh, thought, you know, uh, what should I say, teaching and, and promotion, mm -hmm. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. you know. So finally, let's talk about the future prospect, prospect OCAC. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be in the ministry for another year, you know, and you are running for the uh, legislature, and so you'll be re retiring sometime next year. So for the next year or so, what are you hoping to accomplish uh, during the rest of your term? It's a hard question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> if I were um, elected to be a member of the um, Legislative Yuan, mm -hmm. then I would start serving my term uh, 
February, February next, next year. year. That's yeah. right. It's very close to the ending mm -hmm. of President Chen's term, right? right? But anyway, when I look back, I don't have any regret because uh, for the past seven years, I have really cleaned up the shop. A lot of uh, problems, one by one, I solved them. And whoever uh, succeeded to my uh, post, my position, I think would have an easy time up. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Zhang, thank you very much, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mrs. Zhang of Overseas Compatriot Affairs Commission, thank you for watching Taiwan Outlook. See you next time.